Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Thursday night episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. A huge thank you for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home in the beautiful Lime Bay. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Uh, now, listen, we've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok every, what, well, every night at the moment. George and I, George is my eldest, he's, he's 12, but every night of the week at the moment, for the past week or so, 7.30 uh, UK time, George and I have been doing a live on TikTok. Yeah, I know. I'm really down with the kids, as you can probably tell from the fact I've just used the line down with the kids. But if you want to check it out, please do. We just have a little bit of a chat with everybody and it's become very popular. We've made it like a little safe place, which I think is important in this day and age, don't you? Good. Well, I'm glad you agree. Now then, if I could ask a, a little favour. Oh, George has just arrived. Look, George, right. I was just telling people in my podcast about how you and I do a live every night at 7.30. At 7.30, yeah, we do. And we're really popular, aren't we? Well, well you are. Uh, yeah. And the really nice thing was today, one of our viewers sent you some sweets, big box of sweets, really you and William. So George and William have oh been, mu- mu- oh, fine. Uh, George and William have been bunching away on a big box of sweets today. So big thank you to uh, our little supporter down there in Exeter for that. Now then, time for our latest episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers. This one's called Double Edge, first broadcast on the 3rd of August, 1952. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. I'd like to talk to the ladies for a moment. We can't eliminate your work for you. I wish we could. But if your job is keeping a home in order, we'll try to lighten the load with a series of wonderful weekday radio shows on this same NBC station. Walter O'Keefe is your genial host on Double or Nothing, and O'Keefe's okay. Set your dial to double or nothing, and the laughter will add a bit of brightness to your day. Another friend of yours is radio's Warren Hall, who daily presides over Strike It Rich, the program with a heart. The program that can give you a lift while bringing financial happiness to a contestant. Dave Garraway is another gloom chaser in NBC's daytime schedule. And Bob and Ray, this year's Peabody Award-winning comics, make subtle fun of radio in a rib-tickling way. So be sure to include them in your listening, too. Yes, as I said before, I wish we could eliminate your housework, but since we can't, maybe listening to these fine NBC shows will help to pass the time more quickly. Why don't you try it out, tomorrow and every day this week? Now, Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Double Edge. It is 11.30 on a Monday morning in June during the early 1920s. In the town of Holden, Texas, an elderly woman puts through a telephone call to the bank. That's right, operator. A 423J. Now you be quiet, baby. You know your mother doesn't like you to cry. Mr. Vance? Yes? This is Agatha Winford. How are you today? Oh, just fine, thanks, Miss Winford. Uh, Say, would you hold on a second, please? Uh, Just a minute. Mm. Here's your bank book, Miss Winford. What can I do for you, Miss Winter? Oh, well, I'm over here at Miss Johnson minding her baby while she's marching, and I thought she wouldn't mind if I used the phone to call you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I just got a notice from you this morning, and I want to tell you the bank's made an awful mistake in my account. What is the mistake, Miss Winter? Well, I know I've got $43 left in my checking account, but that notice you sent said I've only got 23 Now, that's just not so. Now, we're very careful here, ma'am. 
Maybe you made some kind of mistake in your dish. No, I didn't. Uh, would you please excuse me, Miss Winter? Can you hold on while I take care of a customer here? Well, all right. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. well, I'll be with you in a minute, baby. Baby. Baby, I thought... Oh, well. Now, oh, baby, don't you cry. Well, that's a good baby. Now, you just be nice while I finish talking to Mr. Vance here. Mr. Vance? Now, look, mister. Give me all the money you got. Still busy. Paper bag. Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that rest. Give me the back of the drawer. Huh? I don't have any more. You want your brains blown out? Give me that money. Oh! All right, all right. Hey, you Mr. Mr. Vance. Mr. Vance. Mr. Vance. Oh, uh-oh. That's all I got, Mr. Well, you kidding? Go in that other drawer and clean it out. Oh. Huh? Yes, sir. Oh. What am I going to do? What's this phone doing off the hook? Well, I don't know. Oh. Hang it up. Oh, oh, this is awful. Operator, operator. Oh, why don't you answer? Operator, operator. Mrs. Winford notified the sheriff that the bank was being held up. Within a matter of minutes, the sheriff raced to the scene, only to find that the holdup man had already made a getaway. After a preliminary survey, the sheriff requested assistance from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned and arrived at the bank 15 minutes later. Over here, Jace. Howdy, Sheriff. I'm glad you could get here so fast. I was only about 10 miles away when my headquarters contacted me. Fellas that held up this place sure had a lot of nerve. How many were there? Only two, as far as I can gather. One of them kept the customers in the back. The other one got the money from the teller. Took nearly $6,000. Anybody able to identify them? Nope. They were both wearing bandanas over their faces. How about their getaway? Anybody see them after they left the bank? Not a soul that I could find. Seems like they just disappeared into thin air. We did get one break, though. What's that? Well, the teller keeps an extra $200 in his drawer just in case the bank is held up. Ten twenties with a special marking. How are the bills marked? There's a green dot inked in under the first letter of the serial number. Naturally, the bank's got a record of the numbers. That'll help us some. We'll get out of circular. By tomorrow morning, every bank and police officer in Texas will have a copy. It beats me how these fellows had so much nerve. Had it planned right down to the last move. They even took into consideration... Oh, there's Jim Vance coming out of that office. He's a teller. Reckon he's bringing that list of serial numbers. Uh-huh. Hey, got that list of numbers for us, Jim? Yes, sir. Right here. But there was something else I want to see you by. What's that? Well, now, I forgot all about this in the excitement... The man who was holding customers in the back, he passed me on his way out. So yeah? Seemed to be having trouble with his bandana. He slipped down a little just as he got alongside my window. You mean you got a look at his face? Well, no, sir. Not exactly. But I did say one thing. Remembered it while I was writing out those numbers just now. He had a, a, a mole under his eye. Pretty good size one, too. Which eye was it under? Right. Uh, no, no, I got it twisted. I was facing him, so it must have been his left eye. Well, at least we got some information for that bulletin, Jace. Yeah, let's put it on the wires. We broadcast the list of serial numbers and a vague description of the bank robbers. The first day brought no results. On the morning of the second day, I received a call from Sam Crane, constable in the town of Compton, 30 miles from the scene of the robbery. He told me the bank in Compton had reported receiving one of the marked bills the day before. The sheriff wasn't free at the moment, so I went to Compton alone. Ten that morning, I entered the constable's office. Well, Jay. Howdy, Crane. Good to see you again. Real good. It's been a long time since we worked together. Over a year. What about that marked bill? Bank tell you who brought it in? It took the bank a little while to find out. Had to go through all their deposit slips from yesterday. Finally told me it was the owner of a hardware store here. A man by the name of Allen. You sure about that? Yeah, and we might be lucky. It was the only 20 in his deposit for yesterday. Well, haven't you checked him yet? Well, no. I thought it might be better if you did it. See, Allen and I don't get along very well. Don't think he'd be too cooperative with me. And this thing's too important to take a chance. Uh-huh. Tell me where his place is. I'll go see him. It's just down the street. I'll go along with you, Jace, but if you don't mind, I'll let you do the talking. Sure. You figure this Allen could have been involved in the robbery himself? Him? <laughs> no, Jace. Old man Allen's over 60. How come you two don't get along? Well, about a year ago, I bought some tools from him. No good, any of them. The old buzzard never would let me have my money back. I sure hope he can give us something to go on. Well, if Allen does remember who handed him this bill, my guess is it'll turn out to be somebody who just passed through Compton. Maybe so. Oh, howdy, Miss Palmer. 
you had any luck? Well, to tell the truth, I've been pretty busy since you came in this morning. Anyhow, I was sure your husband would be back by now. Oh, he's not. I told you he went out yesterday afternoon right after he got that phone call. Jeff never stayed away like this without saying where he was going. Now, Mrs. Palmer, he'll turn up. But he didn't even take the car. Whenever he goes away, he always takes it. Maybe he's over at his brother's place. Bet you haven't even called there, have you? Well... No, I haven't. Well, why don't you go home, then? He's probably been trying to reach you. But it's 20 miles over to his brother's house. He couldn't get there without the car. Well, maybe he got a ride. Now, you run along home before he gets worried, wondering why he can't reach you. Well, all right, Tom. You're keeping you busy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that husband of hers is always taking off. Are you sure he's not missing? Nah. Jeff Palmer takes a notion to go somewhere, he goes. He's only been away one night. Uh-huh. I swear it never rains, but it pours. For three weeks, nothing's happened here. Now I got more work than I can handle. Well, here's the hardware store. Hope old man Allen's memory's better than I think it is. Oh, it's you, Constable. Thought I told you I didn't want to do business with you no more. Don't worry, Allen. I wouldn't think of buying anything from this store. Ranger Pearson here wants to ask you a few questions. Well, all right. What's on your mind, Ranger? You have that bill, Crane. For sure, Jace. Mr. Allen, you deposited this bill in the bank yesterday. What's the matter, counterfeit? It's part of the money that was stolen from a bank in Holden. Oh, you mean in that big robbery over there on Monday? That's right. That's so. I read about it in the paper. This was the only 20 you deposited yesterday. Do you remember who brought it in here? Let me see. No, Ranger, don't reckon I do. I was afraid he wouldn't, Chase. Just what do you mean by that, Constable? Now, wait a minute, both of you. I'm sorry, Ranger. Just give me a second or two. Maybe I can remember the fellow that brought it in. Just take your time. See, now, it's been... No, it's no use. I just can't bring him to mind. Do you have any idea if it was yesterday morning or in the afternoon you got the bill? Couldn't say. What time do you take the money to the bank? About 2.30, same time I always do. I see. And how much cash do you usually have on hand when you open the store in the morning? Oh, maybe $25, $30. Just enough to make change. If somebody handed you a $20 bill any time before noon, it would pretty much clean out your cash drawer, wouldn't it? Yeah, I reckon it would. Well, then isn't it a pretty good chance you received the bill sometime between noon and the time you went to the bank? Well, I never thought of it that way. But I still don't... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. I just finished eating, and this fella came in and bought a box of shotgun shells. He was the one that gave me the 20. You sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. Did you know the man, Mr. Allen? Oh, I've seen him around town. I don't know his name. Could be he lives in one of them farms outside Compton. Could you give us a description of him? Well, I ain't much of a hand at telling people what other people look like. Well, do you remember if he had a mole under his left eye? Mole? To tell you the truth, Ranger, I'm just not sure. Maybe he did, but I can't swear one way or the other. All right, Mr. Allen. Thanks a lot. Well, one thing I'll say, if I was to see this fellow again, I'd know him. I hope we can show him to you soon. Come on, Crane. Get back to your office. I still think the old man made a mistake, Jace. That bank job wasn't pulled by any local boys. Maybe not. There's no doubt one of the men we're after was around here. We've got to see if he's still around. <laughs> oh, Miss Palmer, what are you doing here? I'm sorry to make a pierce to myself, Constable. That's all right. I called Jeff's brother, and he isn't over there. I don't know where he is. Now he'll turn up. Something's happened to him. I know it. Ranger, maybe you can help me. Isn't there anything I can do to find my husband? Well, you could have the constable file a missing persons report. That way all the police in the state would be on the lookout for him. Will you do that, constable? Oh, sure, Miss Palmer. But I think before you do that, you ought to give Jeff a little longer to show up. I can't wait any longer. I couldn't sleep all last night. I know something's happened to him. All right, I'll file a report. I filled one out. I'm not even sure I've got the form. I got some in the car if you need them. Oh, here's one. Now, oh, Mrs. Palmer, you're all upset. Why don't you go on home? I'll fill this out myself. Now, don't forget, Crane. Mrs. Palmer has to sign the form. Oh, yeah. Probably be better if she fills in the description anyhow. What kind of a description do you need, Ranger? Well, the usual description. Height, weight, color of hair and eyes. Anything we can use to identify him. Well... Jeff looks just about like anybody else. Now, no two people are alike, Mrs. Palmer. There must be something that's different about him. I can't think of anything, except maybe a mole. What's that? He's got a mole under his left eye. In 
just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. As a civilian at home, what is your obligation to a soldier in a foxhole in Korea? Maybe you haven't considered that question. If you haven't, it's understandable. A foxhole in Korea is pretty remote, after all, from your everyday life. And it wouldn't help if you were constantly worrying. But if you have stopped to consider it, the least we can do here at home in the States is to help keep America financially strong. That's the best way to back up the men in the Army, Navy, and Air Force. One of the best ways to help keep America financially strong is to buy United States defense bonds regularly. If you think you can't afford it, look into the payroll savings plan where you work. You'll probably change your mind. You can have any amount you specify saved from each paycheck. When there's enough for a defense bond, it is purchased and turned over to you. And remember, today defense bonds offer you more interest, a quicker return on your money. They're now even better. Invest more in defense bonds. Now, Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Double Edge. I was fairly sure now that Jeff Palmer was one of the two men we were after. Continued questioning of his wife convinced me she knew nothing of the bank robbery. We put out an APB on Palmer. Three days later, I had a call from the sheriff. A man whose description matched Palmer's had been found dead in a creek near Compton. The quickest way for me to get there was on horseback through two miles of brush. When I reached the creek, I forded it and headed upstream to the spot where the sheriff and his men were waiting. Howdy, Sheriff. Well, it's a good thing you had your horse, Jake. Saved you 20 miles of driving. Yeah, who, who, Charlie? Who, boy? Huh? Who found the body? Those fellows over there. They were out fishing. Spotted a man's arm sticking out of the water. Body had been wired to an old log, but it looks like one of the wires worked loose. Uh-huh. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, right over here, Jason. Pretty sure it's Palmer? Well, description checks with the one his wife signed, so I reckon it's him. Here we are. Yeah. Shot four times. The fellow who did it must have been standing right next to him. Somebody really wanted to make sure he was dead. I wonder why Palmer was killed. Well, there's only two reasons I can think of. Either to shut him up or keep him from getting his share of the money. Maybe both. Sounds reasonable. If we find the second man in that bank robbery, we'll probably have the one who killed Palmer. There don't seem to be much to go on. One thing we can be pretty sure of, he was killed right here. How do you figure that? Tent's been made to cover it up, but you can still see quite a bit of blood on the ground here. Yeah, I noticed that, but I thought he could have been killed somewhere else and brought here. And then there wouldn't be all this blood. Not much bleeding after death. Well, it would have been smart of the killer to do the job here. Certainly not many people around. No, we'll have to go over the area. You checked that cabin up on the hill, Sheriff? Where? Through those trees. Oh. No, I didn't notice it before. The person who lives there could have heard the shots. We'd better talk to him. Okay. Opening in the brush. We can go up through here. Uh-huh. Pretty much trampled from here on up the hill. Somebody's come down almost to the spot where Palmer was killed. In the past few days, too, from the look of it. You think whoever lives in that cabin had something to do with this business? Could be. Yeah, they might have been hiding out here together and then... We... Hey, Jace, a man just ducked behind that tree up there. Yeah. Look, he's starting up the hill. Hold it right where you are. Hold it, I said. Mr. Ranger... I, I ain't done nothing. Nobody's saying you have. What's your name? Dan. Dan Bolton, sir. You live in that cabin up there? He, he, yes, sir. Stay around there pretty much, do you? Most of the time. Except about once a week, I take my mule and go into town. You heard any shooting around here in the last couple of days? I, yes, sir, I have. When was this? Oh, uh, reckon it's about four days ago. I, I was smoking some meat back at the cabin, and I hear some shooting. Did you come down the hill to see what it was? Now, Mr. Ranger, please don't ask me no more questions. Dan, it's very important we find out what happened. You could help us. Well, well all right, sir. As soon as I hear the shots, I, I come about halfway down the hill. Could you see anybody? Uh, I've seen a man bending over another man on the ground. I ducked down quick here and hear his brush... I was scared if he'd see me, he'd shoot me, too. Did you see his face? Yes, sir. You know who he was? Uh, no, sir. I don't think you're telling us the truth, Dan. Mr. Ranger, 
I just live here in my cabin, and I don't hurt nobody, and I don't want nobody hurting me. Dan, tell us who the man was you saw down here the other day. I can't, Mr. Ranger. I'm scared. Nothing's going to happen to you. I can promise you that. Well, like I say, I was hiding here in the brush. I, I, I didn't see this man's face good till he picked the other man up and carried him over to the creek. Then I see him real plain. Who was it, Dan? The, the constable in the Compton, Mr. Sam Crane. We questioned the old man further. He was absolutely sure it was Constable Sam Crane he had seen. We took Dan back into town with us. When we arrived at the mortuary where the dead man's body had been taken, we put Dan in an office next to the morgue. And I phoned the constable and asked him to come over as quickly as possible. The sheriff and I stayed in the room with Palmer's body. Five minutes later, Crane walked in. I got here as quick as I could, Jace. What's this all... Oh, Sheriff. Howdy, Crane. You wanted me for something? I found the body of a man. It could be Palmer. I'd like you to identify him. Well, sure, but why me? Why didn't you get Miss Palmer? We wanted to be sure we were right before we call her down here. There's no use getting her any more upset than we have to. Well, I didn't know him very well, Jay. Didn't you? Funny, I got the idea you did. Is that the body over there? Yeah, better take a look. Where'd you find him? Neck Creek, about ten miles from here. Pull the sheet back, will you, Sheriff? Sure, Jay. Well, Crane? Oh. If you can cover him up again, it's Jeff Palmer. Who killed him? I thought maybe you could tell us that. Me? Where were you at 11.30 Monday morning? Monday? Uh-huh. Where were you? Well, I don't know, Jace. Reckon I was in my office working. I reckon you weren't, Crane. Look, How what? about Tuesday? The day after the bank was robbed in Holden. The afternoon that Jeff Palmer disappeared. Well, Jace, why are you asking me all these questions? Because we think you and Palmer robbed that bank in Holden. What? The morning after the stick-up, you got the circular saying some of the money was hot. Now, wait a minute, Jace. You went out to warn Palmer. And when you found out he'd already spent some of the money and would probably be traced, you had to shut him up. You took him out the creek and killed him. You're crazy, Jace. If I did that, you think I'd have reported finding one of the stolen bills? You had to do that. If you hadn't reported it, the bank would, and you knew it. That's a pretty serious accusation you're making, Jace. I wouldn't be making it unless I was pretty sure of what I was saying. How can you be so sure? Come into the next room with us, Crane. What for? You'll find out. Better take his gun, Sheriff. Look, you. Hold still. That's better. Now, come on. Fine friend you turned out to be. You think I like doing this? Dan? Yes? Who's this? Dan, take a look at this man. Yes, sir. You know him? Uh... Yes, sir. You sure you know him? Hey, yes, sir. He's Mr. Sam Crane. Where'd you see him last? Mr. Ranger. Just tell us where you saw him, Dan. Uh, out the creek at my place. You lie. Hold it, Crane. Dan, when you saw him out at the creek, what was he doing? He, he takes some man off the ground and put him in the creek. That's a lie. Jace, I've known you for ten years. You're going to take his word against mine? Yes, I am. Without giving me a chance? You had your chance when Palmer's wife came in and reported him missing. You tried to brush her off. You're a liar. I didn't know why you were so lax then, but I do now. You were afraid we'd find your partner's body. Why, what do you Jace? Want I'll kill you, you liar. I don't think you will. Uh, uh, Try that again, Crane. You, you can't railroad me like this. I'm still a police officer. That's something I've been ashamed of for the past three hours. Come on. During the ride to the county jail, Crane said nothing, but the hate and bitterness showed in his eyes. We booked him for murder and locked him up. We searched his house and found the money from the bank robbery sewed inside a mattress. Two months later, Crane was tried in the district court at Holden for armed robbery and murder. As the arresting officer, I was subpoenaed and took the stand against him trial lasted a week. When the jury left the courtroom, I went outside and stood on the courthouse steps. After a while, the sheriff came out and walked toward me. Well, it's all over, Jace. Mm. Jury recommended the chair. They didn't seem to have any trouble deciding he was guilty. No, I reckon not. I didn't know you'd walked out till after the jury came back. Sorry you didn't get to hear the verdict. It's all right, Sheriff. I wasn't anxious to hear it. Jace... You don't mind my saying so. You're, you're taking this thing too hard. Yeah, maybe so. Crane is no good. He's rotten clean through. You ought to be glad you helped him get what he deserves. Somehow I can't feel that way. It's bad enough sending a man to the chair any time. 
somebody you've known and worked with. Yeah, I reckon I understand how you feel. You oh, the deputies are bringing him out now. I was hoping I'd see you before they took me away, Pearson. Hello, Crane. Wait a minute, boys. I got a few words to say to Pearson here. Never mind what you've got to say. Charlie, take him on. Just a here. second. What were you going to say, Crane? You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Testifying against me like you did. I only did what I had to. Yeah? Well, listen, Pearson. I'll get you. I'll get you of the last thing I do. Sorry you feel that way. You hear me, Pearson? I'm going to get you. Take him away, boys. I'll get you, Pearson. I'll get you. Dirty scum. He ought to have his face pushed in. Come on, Sheriff. Let's go get some coffee. I went back to headquarters. A week later, on the day Crane was to be taken to the county jail to the penitentiary, I received a message saying the sheriff wanted to see me. I drove to Holden and went to the sheriff's office. Sorry to bring you all the way back here, Jace. I hope you're not going to be sore at me. What's up? Well, it's about Crane. I, I was supposed to leave for Huntsville with him two hours ago. No trouble, is there? Oh, no, not a bit. Matter of fact, ever since he was sentenced, Crane's been a changed man. How do you mean? Well, his whole attitude's different, Jace. He even asked the judge to move up his electrocution date. Said he wanted to get it over with as quick as possible. Then he asked to see you, Jason. What for? Uh, you've got no idea how sorry he is for the way he acted last week. When he begged to see you, why, well, it was one favor I just couldn't refuse him. I'm glad you didn't. Where is he? I got him locked up back here. We're all set to leave. You want to wait till I bring him out? I'll go with you. I just can't get over the way he's changed. I reckon it's knowing he's going to die that did it. Well, whatever it is, I'm happy to hear he has changed. You know how bad I felt about this whole thing. Yeah, and last week I thought you were wrong. Now I'm ready to eat my words. Here we are. It's Crane. Okay, Sheriff. I got a hold of Jace for you. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. Hello, Crane. Jace, I... I don't know how to say this. Don't worry about it. I understand. No, I, I've got to say it. I... I figured out a dozen ways of telling you, and, and none of them seems right. I reckon the best way is just to say I, I'm sorry. That's all right, Crane. I, I've been thinking about it the way I blew off at you. I, I was wrong. You just did what you had to do. Jace, will you shake hands with me? Sure, I will. I reckon we better get moving, boys. Would you do a favor for me, Jace? If I can. There's a, a girl over in Compton. We've been going together a few years. Might have been married someday. You want me to go see her? Would you, Jace? Drop in on her every now and then and see if she's getting along all right. I'd be glad to. I'd like to show you a picture of her. Sheriff, is that my satchel over there? Yeah. All packed and ready to go. There's a picture of my girl in it. Could I have it? Sure, Crane. It's right on top. I feel real sorry for her, Jace. All the publicity. This it in the leather frame? Yeah. I never deserved a girl like her in the first place. Here you are. Thanks. What do you think of her, Jace? Pretty girl. I bet she is. Here. Let me get it into a better light. Now you can see what I wanted you to see. Jace, he's got a razor blade. Yeah, I, I told you I'd get you. a little late. My, my arm, my arm. Drop that blade. Uh, drop it. Uh, now put the cuffs on him, Sheriff. Yeah. You dirty louse. Shut up. Should have known better than to trust him. Where'd you get that razor blade anyhow? I had it hidden in the picture frame. Say, your hand's bleeding, Jace. Did he get you bad? Just nick me a little. Shut up in your throat. I told you to shut up. Ah, uh, come on, Crane. The last favor you'll get from me. Get your mouth off me. Come on. Sheriff, I hope you got room in your car for one more. This boy needs lots of company. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Monday means music on NBC. And tomorrow evening, you're invited to relax in your favorite easy chair or outdoors where you can catch a breath of a breeze and listen to the finest in musical entertainment on NBC. The Railroad Hour once again will bring you an original operetta by Jerry Lawrence and Bob Lee with music composed and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Your Railroad Hour host, Gordon McRae, will be joined by lovely Lucille Norman to bring you Starlight. Later, the telephone hour will present the brilliant young pianist, Nicole Auriol, as the special guest of the evening. And, of course, Monday's musical entertainment wouldn't be complete without the voice of Firestone. 
Tomorrow evening, the voice of Firestone presents soprano Roberta Peters and the music of Howard Barlow and the Firestone Orchestra and Chorus. Yes, Monday night is truly a night to relax and beat the heat by finding the coolest spot available and listening to NBC's great musical programs. Be sure to hear them all tomorrow. Now, the conclusion of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Sam Crane was taken to Huntsville Penitentiary and confined in the special cell block set aside for condemned prisoners. Ninety-three days later, still defiant, he died in the electric chair. Next week, Joel McRae and another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of... The Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Virginia Gregg, Frank Gerstel, Parley Bear, Paul McVeigh, and Robert Bice. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keats. Tales of the Texas Rangers is heard each week overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, hear the Hollywood Bowl concert on NBC. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And don't forget, comedy for the end of the week tomorrow, Dad's Army, going live at 5 p.m. UK time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Go check it out. We'd like that. That'd be nice. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Sum Radio Show. Love you. Bye.